Okay, we're going to do a quick overview for the third project. We'll look at the basic idea for the project and do a quick example and then look at spreadsheets and how we can set up a spreadsheet. So what we'll do is, uh, first other thing I'll do is I'll go over the goals for this video, look at the basic idea for the project itself, and then go over the example that's written up in the project. And that's an example of looking at what happens with a solar panel that's fixed in place and ask what's the total amount of energy uh, it can take in over the course of a day. So after this uh, video, you should be able to take a light ray, break it up into components. Uh, from that, you should be able to find the energy over a given time period, and then add up the energy over each time period to make an approximation for the total energy, and then be able to use a spreadsheet to make those calculations and find that sum. So now we're going to look at the basic idea and see what happens here with that. The sun is a source of energy for plant life. Energy from the sun radiates outward, and when it strikes a leaf, it becomes available for the leaf to convert into chemical energy. The goal of this project is to figure out um, an approximation for the total amount of energy that strikes the leaf through the course of a given day. And there are two particular issues that we're going to focus on. First is the magnitude of that energy changes throughout the day. So you need to find a function to approximate. What happens is the uh, the magnitude of that energy is zero in the morning and rises to a maximum at midday and then decreases back down to zero at the end of the day. Additionally, the direction of that radiation changes throughout the day. So through the morning to midday and evening, the sun will go through a full arc across the sky. And the amount of energy that is available to the leaf is going to depend on that direction. So the component of the ray that is perpendicular to the leaf is what the leaf can absorb and convert to energy. So the goal here is to divide the day up into small intervals of time. Over each interval, make an approximation for the total amount of energy striking the leaf, and then define the approximation for the total energy added up for over each interval throughout the day. All right, now let's look at an example. So in this example, we're going to look at a solar panel. And the idea is that the solar panel is going to be uh, fixed on the ground, facing up horizontally. And we want to know what is the total amount of energy that's possible for this thing to absorb. Um, now, in practice, usually these things are turned throughout the day to face the sun. But we're going to look at a special case here and just assume that these panels are stationary, do not move. And they're going to be flat or horizontal. Uh, and facing upwards, directly upwards. Uh, so what happens is, is that throughout the day, the amount of light or the intensity of light is going to change. So we're going to assume a 12, hour, uh, 12 hours of daylight. So at 6 a.m., um, the sun is going to come up. Uh, the amount of light is going to gradually increase from zero and gradually come up. Um, it's going to hit a maximum of 136 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Then it's going to decrease. And then uh, at night, it's going to be at 1800 or 6 p.m. Um, yes. At 1800, then this thing is, the amount of light is going to go to zero. So the idea is I've got my solar panel initially in the morning then the light is going to come here at an angle of zero radians. Uh, at midday, it's going to be coming down directly, uh, straight down. So this is going to be midday. And then in the evening, so this is what this is going to be. This is going to be, what, pi over 2 radians. And in the evening, uh, at 6 p.m., it's going to be at a, coming at an angle of pi radians. Okay. And so the... Uh, if I were to look at this in terms of time and light intensity, right, we're going to expect this thing to be 0 until 6. And then it's going to kind of come up and then come back down and then go to 0. Okay. Uh, for the project, you're going to have to figure out what kind of function to use to mimic this. Um, and what's going to be important is that you fu justify your decision for the function you use here. So uh, there's not a unique function that's going to be doing that's going to be uh, right, uh, but 
what's going to be important is that you find something appropriate and you provide a reasonable justification. Now, just to keep things easier, we're going to look at a special case. And we're just going to make an assumption that it's going to be uh, a full 136 milliwatts per centimeter squared uh, throughout the day. So as soon as morning pops up, it's going to be full blast for the whole day. And we're just doing that to make this a little easier for the example. Okay. Um, so now, as the um, sun moves in the sky, the solar panel is going to stay stationary. So we're going to assume if you look at this solar panel from the side, right, so it's going to be basically uh, just horizontal, right, and so uh, the edge of it is sticking out of the page, and then at any part, part of the day, the sun's going to come down and hit it at some angle. The area of this thing is going to be four meters squared. Those units are going to be important, so we'll see later. And the sun is going to change, right? So initially, this angle, we'll call it phi, is going to go from zero, right? At 6 a.m. at noon, it's going to be straight down, so that angle will be pi over two. And at 6 p.m., uh, this angle will be pi, it'll be coming straight across. And what's important is that the amount of light available to this thing is going to depend on the angle. Right? So when the angle is zero, basically no light is striking the surface. It's just going across the top. Um, and then when it's coming straight down, it gets all the energy. But when it's at some angle like this, it's only going to get a portion of the energy. Right? And that portion, right? so if I think about these rays coming down parallel, then the amount of energy that's available to this thing is going to basically be the amount of energy going through this imaginary surface there. Right? And so now the way we're going to do this is uh, instead of looking at that surface there, we're going to break it up and look at how much light is coming straight into here. And each of these rays we're going to break up into two pieces, the part coming straight down and the part that's parallel. And that's the part that's going to be striking the solar array and is going to be uh, providing energy that's going to be available to the energy, to the solar panel. Okay, so the idea is this. Solar panel is horizontal, sticking straight out of the page. And throughout the day, right, so initially it's going to be at an angle of zero. It's going to end up at an angle of pi at midday. It's coming straight down, right? So that angle, so this is going to be uh, an angle of pi over two, right? So this is going to be at 6 a.m. It's going to be at 12 p.m. And this is going to be at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And at s for any given time of the day, this is going to be some angle phi. And we need to know how much of this sunlight is going to be coming straight down into this panel and the rest of it, the part that's going to be parallel to the panel is basically energy that's not going to be available to it. So the question is, is what's that? And what we know is that we've got 136 milliwatts per centimeter squared uh, coming down here. If we treat this as the hypotenuse, we're going to try to use the, some trigonometry to figure out how much is going on right there. Okay. So uh, we have some energy coming down throughout the day. And again, we're just going to make some simple assumption about what that is. But for your project, this is going to change in time. We want to know how much of this energy is coming straight into the panel. Actually, we're not for us, we're not going to care about this wasted energy. We only want to know what's going on here. And keep in mind, we have that angle phi. So what do we know? We know that we look at the sine of phi. The reason we're looking at sine of phi is because it has the things we know and things we don't know. If we call this h, it's going to be h over e. So h is going to be e of t times c of phi. And it's going to be important to keep in mind that phi is going to change in time. Okay. So we've got our energy coming in 
that's available from the sun. This is where E of t, oops, we have a component of that energy that's coming straight in. And we have that angle phi. And then we know then that the amount of energy coming straight into the panel is going to be given by E times sine of phi. The next question is, how do I figure out what that phi is for any time of the day? And keep in mind, you have to figure out what you're going to use for this for your case. And this is going to be some different function that you're going to know as well. And so you'll be able to make this calculation once you figure that out. All right, so let's see. So what's the idea here? So we're going to go from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., or 0, 0600 to 1800. Uh, now, for the year project, you're going to divide the time intervals into 15 minutes. We're going to be using uh, two hours here just to keep it simpler and make it uh, easier to see everything at once. Uh, again, we're going to uh, use a constant, uh, all right, I need to be careful here, for over each two hour period, we're going to assume that the light doesn't change much. So we're just going to assume everything is constant over that two, inter that two hour interval, and then uh, figure out how much energy is going to be, uh, or approximate the amount of energy based on that assumption. Once we get that energy for each interval, then we just add up what energy is available over each interval. And that's going to give us an approximation for the total. And the key word here is that this is going to be a very rough approximation. All right. First problem is, is let's, if we go back and think about our, um, uh, our unit, what we have four meters squared. Uh, so we need to have units of meters. Um, and for, we're trying to find energy. Energy is going to be the number of watts times the number of seconds or time. Uh, so we got to figure out how to get watts out of this. And we're given things in milliwatts per centimeter squared. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to convert the milliwatts, right? So the milliwatts, we're going to convert those into watts. And what thing to recognize is that each milliwatt Sorry, each milliwatt, um, let me be careful, each watt has a thousand milliwatts. And so if I were to uh, use this, then what happens is that the milliwatts is going to cancel and I'm going to be left with watts. So if I take 136 divided by a thousand, that'll give me watts per centimeter squared. Now I need to convert the centimeter squared to meter squared. Now for each meter has a hundred centimeters, but since it's squared, I'm gonna to have to square this. And what's gonna happen then is that the centimeter squared, oops, the centimeter squared here is gonna cancel and I'm gonna be left with meter squared. And when I make all those calculations and get everything out, I'm gonna have 1360 watts per meter squared. And now to get the energy, I'm going to have my 4 meters squared times 1360 watts per meter squared. Right, the meter squared will cancel out. I'm left with watts. And then I'm going to multiply that by the number of seconds. And that will give me the energy in joules. Oops. If I could spell joules. All right, so what's going to happen here? I need, I have, um, my interval's two hours. I need to figure out how many seconds that's going to be. Well, let's see. So I'm given hours. Each hour has 60 minutes. So if I make, uh, if I take two hours times 60, I'm going to get 120 minutes per hour. So the hours are going to cancel. Uh, each minute has 60 seconds. So this is going to cancel the minutes. And so each two hour period will have 7,200 seconds in it. Now, next thing I need to do is I need to figure out what phi is going to be for any given time of the day. And I'm going to assume that uh, the Earth is going to spin at a constant rate. So if, that's, if the sun is moving at it uniformly, that's going to imply that the phi is going to be a linear function of time. So what do I know? I know that when t is 6 hours, my angle is 0. 
I know that when I have 18 hours, or at 6 p.m., my angle is going to be phi. Okay. So if I use point intercept form, right, I'm going to use this point there. There's my 6, and that 0 comes from there. And I don't know what the slope is going to be. But I do know that when I plug in 18, I'm going to get pi. So if I plug in uh, phi of 18 equals pi into this equation down here, that's 12. Divide both sides by 12, and my slope is that. So that means that phi of t is going to be pi over 12 times p minus 6 plus 0. So the idea is this. So I've already decided I'm going to use two, interv two hour intervals. So from 6 to 8, uh, I'm going to just assume everything is constant. Then from 8 to 10, I make a new update. We calculate everything and then assume everything's constant for those two hours. Then do the same thing from 10 to 12, 12 to 14, 14 to 16, and then to here. So I'm going to get the energy here, the energy over that interval, energy over that interval, energy over that interval, and so on. And then the total energy is going to be approximately the energy over the first interval plus energy over the second, third, fourth, on down to the last interval. So now i got to figure out what is the ener energy of each of these points. And keep in mind, I'm going to use phi at time uh, 6 here, phi at time 8 here, phi at time 10 here, 12, 14, and 16, and that's going to give me the angles over each interval that I'm going to use, and I can just plug into this idea then that the number of joules is going to be the watts per centimeter, oops, sorry, watts per meter squared times the meter squared, this is going to be the 4 meters squared for the panel, times the number of seconds for each interval. <clears throat> okay, so as I go from 6 to 8, I'm going to have 1360 watts per meter squared times 4 meters squared, and I'm, the amount of uh, energy available to this is going to be given by the sine of phi, and I multiply by the number of seconds. As I go from 8 to 10, same thing. I'm going to have this for my intensity times the sine of phi, right? so this is going to be phi of 8, times the area, times the amount of time in seconds. As I go from 10 to 12, right, this is going to give me my uh, energy, oops, that's the intensity, times sine of phi, times 4 meters squared, times that energy, or sorry, times the time for the interval. So I go from 12 to 14. This will be the energy during, approximation for the energy for that interval. So I go from 14 to 16. This will be the approximation of the energy for that interval. And then finally, as I go from 16 to 18, this will be the energy for that interval. And I'm going to punch that, punch that in the calculator. This is my total. Okay, so it's a big, huge number. Um, so there's actually a lot of energy hits the Earth from the sun. Um, fortunately, it's not all available to us. But uh, this is uh, uh, how much energy is striking uh, that solar panel. Uh, and so now the big problem here is that you're going to have uh, 15 minutes per interval. And so you're going to have a lot more of these uh, intervals to do. You don't want to punch this in a calculator. So let's look at how we can put this in a spreadsheet and go from there. Okay, we're going to look at how we can set up a spreadsheet uh, to help us with this calculation because there's a lot of stuff here and we don't want to punch this into a calculator. So what am I going to do? So I'm going to uh, create a spreadsheet. The first column is going to have uh, the time. So this is going to go like 6 then 8, then 10, then 12. I'm going to come back and redo this. But this is going to give us the time of the day. 
And you're going to have something different here because you're not going to have a two hour span. So you'll have something different. Um, given uh, the time, I want to be able to calculate the angle. And given the time, I'm going to deal, calculate the light intensity. For us, this is going to be 136, but you're, you're going to have something different. And let's see, and then we're going to need um, the time span. So this is how much time there's going to be uh, over a given interval. And then I'm going to make an approximation of the energy. Oops, I'm going to be careful here. I need the area of the um, solar panel. This is For us, this is just going to be 4. It's going to be constant. Um, and then we're going to use this to approximate the energy over the given time period. Let me redo this. So let's see. So I'm going to start off at 6. Here, what I want to do is I want to take the previous time. So I just hit the up arrow button. And I add 2. So notice I hit, let me redo that. So I'm going to hit equal sign, hit the up arrow key. It's going to take the previous cell, add 2, hit enter. And this basically takes the 6 plus 8. So now if I hit control C to copy, I can bring that down, and that automatically updates everything automatically. Now here's the thing, is I need the start for each time period. So I'm going to have from 6 to 8, 8 to 10, 10 to 12, 12 to 14, 14 to 16, 16 to 18. I don't need those. So I just I had the shift key down, hit the arrow buttons, hit delete, and I've cleared all that. All right. So now I need to find the angle, or uh, yeah, find the angle that's going to uh, be for the sun at this given time. So I'm just going to plug into our formula. So I have equals. Now uh, this is going to be different depending on what spreadsheet you're using. But for pi, it's capital P, capital I, open, close parentheses, divided by 12, and then I'm going to multiply by the time. So I uh, hit the left arrow. It was what was it minus six close parentheses and then enter so there's the angle at six so now i'm going to copy this down all the way down here so i come up to here control c down arrow and now i'm going to press the shift button highlight everything hit control v and that is going to be the angle at this time start time of each interval Right, so time equals 6, there's the angle in radians. At 8, there's the angle in radians. By the way, this has to be in radians or you're going to get the wrong answer. Uh, now for us, what was the intensity? We're just going to assume it was 1360. So for us, it's going to be the same all the way down. Okay. Um, and now i got to figure out how many seconds are in each time span. So here's what I'm going to do. is I'm going to uh, hit equals, open parentheses, hitting the left... Uh, arrow key, then the down, and I, I'm going to take the end time minus, and now we're going to move to highlight the cell above, close parentheses. Now if I just hit enter, that's going to be a two hour time span. I need to convert this to seconds though. So each hour has 60 minutes, each minute has 60 seconds. So there's the amount of time that's going to take place uh, for that time interval. So I'm going to copy that to control C, highlight, go down. Oops, and we see a problem there. And the problem is, is that I don't have the end there. So let me copy that and paste it there. And now I'm okay. All right, and now I'm going to say use, this is going to stay constant at four all the way across. Now for the energy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, let's see, the intensity. So I need back up here. So what do I do? I hit equal sign, hit the left arrow key, I highlight the intensity column, times, and I'm going to take the sign of the angle. So now I hit the arrow keys to highlight that angle, close parentheses, times, now I'm going to take times the area of the um, solar panel, and then finally times the time span and I'm hitting the arrow keys to highlight the time span column, and I hit enter. And there's my approximation for the energy and the interval from six to eight hours. I control C to copy that. I go down to start here, I hit shift, down arrow keys, 
and I hit control V's that's going to copy that formula so now I've got that's going to be my approximation for the energy for the interval from 8 to 10 hours this is from 10 to 12 12 to 14 14 to 16 16 to 18 and now I want to add all that up so we hit equals sum open parentheses now I'm going to hit the arrow keys I go to the bottom now I hit shift up arrow and I highlight everything close parentheses and enter and there is my approximation of the amount of joules that's going to be available to this thing uh, over this particular time period okay and as you can see doing this in a spreadsheet is going to be much easier and what's nice is if you come back later and you decided you made a mistake in this calculating this you can change this uh, suppose I'm just going to make something up it's 600 instead you just copy that over and then everything gets updated automatically right? or if you decided you made a uh, wrong conversion change that and bang if you decide you want to use uh, a different time span you change this and you have to add some rows or you want to know what would happen if I uh, increase the area of my um, uh, solar panel and everything gets updated automatically so this is a nice way to just look at make some changes and see what happens and explore and it will automatically update this total all right thank you